Uh, all the high school coaches, at least at the school that I worked at for three years, everybody's on a one-year contract. Right. So you get yes. reevaluated every year. But to basically be on this, like, under a microscope all the time, I feel like, is a little little crazy and a little different. And especially when you – this coach took the team to, to a 30-3 and three record last right. year. So it's not like they were, like, you know, 10-25 and 25 or whatever. Like, this team right, they're good. was really good. Really good. <laughs> Granted, having the Ball Brothers on the team certainly played a part of yes. that. But still – uh, how long do you think before they potentially offer LeVar this job? Or is he too little? Is he too big for a, a high school basketball job? Do you think he thinks he's too big for a high school basketball job? I think he job? does. I, I honestly do because, I mean, if he's out there trying to get a billion-dollar shoe contract, right. I think, you know, getting the whatever couple thousand dollars stipend you get to yeah. coach high school basketball. Like 3000 I think, something right. like that. Something yeah. foolish like that. And right. I bet you, you probably – he's probably going to try to outfit the team with his big baller brand and right. all that crazy stuff too. So – a very typical uh, LeVar Ball. I, I'm curious to see what comes from this, um, but I'm not going to read too much into it. Of course, we do welcome all the comments on Facebook as well this morning. A good morning to you, Jeff, who's chiming in. Good to see you this morning. Brew also. Uh, we have two questions of the day we're asking, of course. Uh, we always try to ask our questions of the day. Uh, Mackenzie brought this one to my attention. Uh, are you mad that McDonald's uh, <laughs> got rid of the high C drink? I, I I've... Haven't been to McDonald's in a long time. I've been trying to eat a little bit healthier with my life. So right. the fact that uh, McDonald's is getting rid of the high C drink, I guess, might be a little bit more shocking and a little bit more upsetting to some. Um, we'll dive into that a little bit more. But we're also asking if college players uh, who have domestic violence charges against them need to be, have that resolved before they're allowed to enter professional sports. Uh, we've seen this off the back of guys like Joe Mixon and others coming into the NFL draft of the weekend. So. Two big questions to kind of dive into this morning, uh, and that we will a little bit later on. Uh, Adam apparently is just beside himself. He says, "What? No!" with a lot of t- with a lot of exclamation points, saying that they're getting. I'm assuming because of the high yeah, the high C. People are really mad about it. I, I, I don't. Yes, I, I don't have an official opinion about it because I never really got high C when I would go. I would usually yeah. get like Powerade or Lemonade or Mountain Dew or something. Yeah. And I think it's orange high C, which, eh, not a fan. True. Josh says he's team orange high C, apparently. So I think there's going to be a bit of an uprising. I mean, social media is buzzing about this. Like, when's the last time that you actually had McDonald's in a positive light? Like, right. I mean, I know that they're trying to, like, get healthier products and all that stuff. But the fact that they're now getting rid of the, the staple that is high C. Right. It's a little, a little surprising to me, I guess. Yeah. Brew also says the orange drink is one of the only things I love at McDonald's. It's my cure. It's my hangover cure. There oh, you go. Oh, all right. So I've, some people are going to be missing it for uh, for that regards as well too. Hmm. Yeah. Are you going to? Are you mad about the high C drink? Did you? Did you ever embark on the high C train at all? No. I think I've had the pink lemonade high C before, but they obviously okay. don't have that at McDonald's. Right. Um, it's too classy. I. I'm like a McDonald's Coke kind of gal. So oh yeah. Okay. I don't. Mm, yeah, I'm not so mad about the high C. Not so mad about the high C. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I can understand that. That makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, I know some people definitely they have their like their go to drink like when they right. go like you said you you got the Coke. I know some people would do the high C. I would do like a lemonade. And sometimes you're just in a mood for like I just need yeah. something sweet that's gonna do nothing for my body right. except you know <laughs> pop me full of sugar. Uh, Adam also given us another thought. He says I don't drink it too much, but one of the orders uh, at work is the fillet of fish meal with a high C orange. Apparently, the high sea orange and the filet wow. of fish go well together, I guess. Yeah, it's a pain. I haven't gotten I'm a filet of sure fish. For, but. I don't honestly remember the last time. Who <laughs> also says it goes great with bourbon as well, too? High sea orange wow. with some bourbon. So people are always looking for those new, unique ways to, yeah. to kind of you know, combine some of those drinks, I guess. But hmm, high sea orange going away from the McDonald's world. Uh, hashtag sad day, I guess, if you are <laughs> if you are one of those people. Uh, it's also kind of a sad day if you're a fan of the NBA world. Um, one of the longtime stars, Paul Pierce, has announced that he is retiring uh, after yeah. 10 all-star appearances and a couple of championships and just a, a storied career through and through this off to the back of the Clippers losing, I'd like to say a little surprising, uh, to the Utah Jazz in Game 7. Yep. They now, uh, the Jazz are going to have to go deal with that team called Golden State, mm-hmm. so that's going to be a little terrifying for them, but... Did you think it was time for Paul Pierce to retire? I think we were kind of expecting it was going to come soon. I would have yeah. th- assumed that Vince Carter would have retired before Paul Pierce would have retired personally. Yeah. But what do you what do you make of this whole Paul Pierce retiring I mean, thing? I'm not completely shocked. Um, I mean, it was about to happen at some point. We knew one of these seasons right. it was going to happen. So, I mean, he went out in the playoffs, played well. True. I mean, there's only so much that you can, you can do, ask right? For. right? Yeah, after a career like his, just. Comes time at some point. True, 
That is very true. Yeah, Paul Pierce, I think, was a phenomenal basketball player. I mean, did a lot for the city of Boston yeah, specifically. I know absolutely. when he went to the Clippers, there wasn't as much that he could do uh, because he was in the latter half of his career. But I know that some people have been mixed about Paul Pierce's last, you know, maybe two or three seasons. But mm-hmm. the Paul Pierce that showed up in the playoffs when Boston went and won that championship yes. with Ray Allen and Kevin Durant yes. or Kevin Garnett, rather, it was just. It was unbelievable. That's the Paul Pierce I'm always going to remember. Granted, I know he's done other things right. in his career, but I think that really is the pinnacle, I feel like, of Paul yeah. Pierce's career. So good for yeah. him, good for the opportunity that he was able to, to do to, to go out and end up retiring that way as well, too. So uh, did you have anything for us this morning about uh, other brewing topics in the in the sports world or in general before we, uh, we jump into the draft a little bit more, Mackenzie? No, I think those were... Uh... My two questions that were on my mind as I came two. in this morning. Absolutely. I people were a little upset about. No, it's true. And like I said, keep uh, if you keep tuning in, uh, keep giving us your thoughts about it as well, too. Josh says it's nowhere near as bad as the unicorn frappe at Starbucks. Um, <laughs> so you would you would rather drink the high C instead of drinking the unicorn frappuccino is what I'm hearing, Josh. Um, I guess I've, since I've had both, it's been a while since I've had the high C. And mm-hmm. we, we taste tested the unicorn frappuccino. I think that was, I think that was about two weeks two now. Two weeks ago-ish, yeah. It was... I, it was doing some weird things to me. I don't yeah. know if I still have fully come down yet, honestly, from, from what I've had on that. But ugh, some nasty stuff, to say the least. But uh, one of the things that is not nasty is one of our NFL correspondents, Unqua Sonye. He is by far the cream of the crop, and I know he's going to make fun of me for saying that. <laughs> but uh, Unqua Sonye does join us this morning. Unqua, uh, how are you, sir? You, I know you're not nasty. You're a, you're a fine gentleman. How are you this morning? <laughs> It is. Good morning. How are you? It's good. It's great to see you. I know it's it's definitely a, a great way to kick it off. And I, I do see that uh, Dara Bittler is with us as well this morning. So good morning to you as well, Dara. How are you? No, we're doing well, Dara. So both of you folks, uh, as you I'm sure, were just head over heels in love with the NFL draft over the weekend. Um, and if you haven't heard as well, too, there's no Jamie this morning. Mackenzie's here hanging out with us this morning. So hey guys. So Mackenzie's hanging out with us this morning. So um, we wanted to dive a little bit deeper into what took place with the NFL draft. Um, I know that there was a lot of speculation of who was going to get drafted first overall. The Browns, surprised, maybe not. Or surpri- it depends on how you fall, I guess, with the fact that they did take Miles Garrett first overall. Uh, Dara, we'll start with you first. Are you happy that they chose who they did, or did they, did they mess it up? What were your thoughts about that? And then Unqua, I'll get you after that. Unqua, what about you? Yeah, and I would agree with you on that one, too. I mean, Miles Garrett is uh, a proven pass rusher, but, I mean, we, we talked about it during our NFL draft show as well, too, that there still is a lot that he has to prove through and through. So just because he was drafted first of all, don't expect him to, to be this, this surefire, you know, savior, I guess, to an extent, if yeah. you are the Cleveland Browns. Um, I, I think the one thing that at least us here in Wisconsin got a good laugh out of was the fact that the Bears drafted Mitch Trubisky second overall. I think nobody really saw it coming. Uh, Dara, we had you on shortly after the pick was made. We had, we had you talk on about Patrick Mahomes as well, too. But what was the, what's the general vibe from your circles, Dara, about everything taking place uh, with Mitch Trubisky going to the Bears, especially after they signed Mike Glennon for an $18 million or $18.5 million contract? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would agree with you. That's for sure. Uh, definitely 
I think definitely surprising in all accounts, in all honesty. I mean, mm-hmm. I, Mackenzie, what did you take away from something like that? Just a, a really weird pick that I still... It's one of those, like, when someone plays a practical joke on yeah. you and it was so bad, but it was also so good at the same time, you're like, yeah. wait a minute. Like, did that did actually that happen? happen? Right. Yeah. What, what did you take away from this? I mean, honestly, I was laughing. <laughs> 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 I, from being obviously on the opposite side of a fan of that team, um, I don't mind it. I think it's funny. I think it... It is. It's it kind of par for the like course, joke, isn't it? So it is. I don't know. It is. Unqua, break it down for us. What do you What do you think about this craziness? <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah, I mean, what else can you say about that honestly? I mean, yes, if you're if you're literally just if you're literally just looking at him, I mean, and you're just like if you literally just had to have a guy walk in the room and be like, "Do you think he's an NFL quarterback?" be like, "Yeah, he's he's a tall, good-looking guy that's built like a quarterback and yeah, he can throw football, you know, on top of that." So, yeah, sure, you must be able to come and say, "Yeah, you're a natural. You should be able to come in and play quarterback." Right. Absolutely. Like it just seems very very silly to me, especially with the two guys they brought in to replace Jay Cutler. I mean, I honestly would almost like to say that I feel like Jay Cutler is going, would have a better career this mm-hmm. season with whatever team he ends up on than the Bears trying to work Trubisky or work, trying to work Mike Glennon in because neither of these guys are proven. At least you kind of know what you're going to get with, right. with, uh, with Jay Cutler, right. which, which I think is... <laughs> is this not the same quarterback who didn't know what a hard count was? I think so. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. sure you learned that in Pop Warner. <laughs> No, but for real. It's true. You? Yeah. yeah. Are you saying Trub- Trubisky or Mike Lennon? Trubisky, you're saying? Yeah, I think. Trubisky, yeah. a hard count. Yeah, I mean, I, I played soccer most of my life, and even I know what a hard count right. is. And I was a kicker even, too. I'm like, oh, yeah. like you, you don't go on one. You go on two or right. three or whatever. Right. Like, I get that for sure. But yeah, moving aside from Trubisky, moving aside from the, the teams that have gotten way too much press, I want to know about the teams that you guys think ended up winning the draft overall. Teams that had needs, they went out, that filled their, their cup, as it were, with players that are going to come in. Uh, you know, certain teams, I, I saw draft grades for like teams like the LA Rams that had like a D minus that were just atrocious, apparently, just not even drafting anybody of any value. But who, who are the, some of the winners? Uh, Unqua, we'll start with you first, and then Dara will go to you. <laughs> there what about you It has nothing to do, I say it has literally nothing to do with the fact that you live in Colorado and that you are a Chiefs fan. Nothing to do with it. But anyway, continue. Ah, there you go. Get out of there. As long as they don't have a, as long as they don't have a Tebow jersey on the wall, then I would, then I would be a little bit more concerned for you, Dara. <laughs> Yeah, I loved him. It was the best news story of the day.
Shout out to Patrick. Well, you talk about you know effectiveness, and usually Cincinnati is not in that conversation come playoff time. But the way that that draft kind of fell for him a little bit, yes, the Joe Mixon pick is controversial, but getting a guy like John Ross who cost himself an island because he wore the wrong shoes because he can't swim. Okay, anyway, <laughs> I just that still kind of blows my mind a little bit yeah. that he said, "No, nah, I don't want the island because I can't swim." Right. But whatever, that's that's a whole other topic for mm-hmm. another day. Anyway, but yeah, Cincinnati they, they're making they're making some of the right picks. I mean, they went six nine and one last season, so yep. clearly they're trying to revamp themselves. They're in a very tough AFC North as well, too. I don't know if Joe Mixon's the starter, though, next year because they still have to deal with guys like Giovanni Bernard and Jeremy Hill. I mean, does he have a chance to win that starting job, Dara? Amen, sister. I agree. Yep. Unqua, what do you think about the whole Joe Mixon thing? It's it's interesting. It is. Right. Yep. Right. Right. And I would agree with you on that one, too. I mean, we've we've had this conversation and that's actually one of our questions of the day, too, is should college players who have domestic violence charges make sure they're resolved before they're allowed to enter the professional sports world, not only the NFL? I mean, uh, how many times were they talking about players during the right. draft this week? And I felt it was on like every five or six players. It's like, oh, this person's been drafted. They're great, great, great. Oh, and by the way, they have this pending right. rape charge, this pending domestic violence charge. Right. I'm like, what? I'm like, why are we? This right. shouldn't be allowed. I agree. Right, exactly. Yeah, I was going to say resolved, but in what way resolved? Like... There's two sides of being resolved. Exactly. A positive and a negative side. So then are you still allowed to play mm-hmm. even if it's been resolved and you've been charged? That, that's the big thing with a lot of this, too, is that the NFL, as, as Unqua said, they need to get to a point where they start to just say, all right, these are the rules we're going to play by. Right. We're, we're not going to continue to, to flex and change. And I've made the argument on the show a hundred times that if Aaron Rodgers went out and shot somebody tomorrow, right. 31 NFL teams would still say, we'll take you right. because he's an elite quarterback exactly. and because he can make their franchise better. Yep. doesn't matter if he went out and killed 12 people. If he decided he wanted to come back to football, every team aside from 
from Green Bay mm -hmm. would be like, absolutely, yes. come Green play. Green Bay is the only one that would not. Just, just because the fact that he has great talent. I mean, that's why yep. Ray Rice didn't get a job again because Ray Rice was at the tail end of his career when everything that he did happened. Right. If Ray Rice was an elite running back, people would have been lining up to yeah. sign him again. doesn't, doesn't matter, matter if he punched a woman in the face. doesn't yep. matter. It's just it, – it blows my mind, unfortunately. I mean, and people have been just absolutely – all over the place with this too which is which and I, people yeah. are like well if he makes the team better like who cares what he did off the field it's like do you want to win a game that much right that you're okay with the fact that this guy either punched his woman out or abused him mm -hmm. or raped this that one girl at a party right. like you're okay with that just so you can get a couple more wins and is it really making the team any better because when you take on a player like that you're you're dealing with the team's reputation there and right you're setting yourself up for a big PR crisis. So it is. winning one game is more important to you than, I mean, really just your reputation and the long standing of your organization, then exactly. I think it's time to reevaluate your and I And I goals. think it's, it's rather ironic, too. You look at the teams that are, are continuously successful. Green Bay, they don't yeah. have a lot of issues. New England, okay, get over the whole cheating deflate right. gate. Like, they're, they're play Tom Brady's not going out and abusing Giselle right. kind of a thing. Like, right. they don't have those big issues. Say mm -hmm. what you will about the other things. But, like, even Atlanta and some of the other high-caliber teams. Pittsburgh, I know they've been a little bit all mm -hmm. over the place with some of their things. But aside from that, those teams are good because they have good morals right. and they punish their players if they do something wrong. Right. So And they just try not to draft people that have right. issues that are pre-standing before the draft or Correct. before they pick them up in free agency or whatever it may be. Exactly. Exactly. All right, Dara and Unqua, before we let you both run, uh, give us your your favorite moment over the weekend, whether it be a draft pick, whether it be the fact that an orangutan announced a Colts pick, whatever the heck it is, which I think is just stupid. But anyway, uh, Unqua, we'll start with you. Favorite draft moment over the weekend, sir? <laughs> you pulled over? <laughs> <laughs> was her right It doesn't take much to compete with Alex Smith, let's be honest. <laughs> that was my thought. <laughs> I don't know about that. No. <laughs> it's like Brett Favre. That's what we keep hearing here in Wisconsin. Patrick Mahomes is the next Brett Favre. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Just because he can throw the ball hard and throw it long doesn't make you doesn't mean you're Brett Favre. I can throw the ball fifty miles an hour. <laughs> Good God. Right, exactly. I I doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But Dara, what what's your uh, what was your moment of the weekend there from the NFL draft? Patty Mahomes over there. Ah. Mm -hmm. mm
Um, probably I have long. a f- I have a five month old son, and he probably doesn't remember the fact that we bought him a new toy over the weekend. So I mean, I'm not <laughs> I'm not betting much the fact that he's going to remember yeah. that. <laughs> Phenomenal. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's proof of that a, uh, that a, a good woman in Jesus will take you a long way, that's for sure. So yeah. that certainly, certainly helps. That is. Yes, no, that exactly. I, I'm, I'm living proof of that, that's for sure. But uh, all right, doing... I know, I know. <laughs> oh, stop it. But anyway, uh, Unqua and Dara, it's always great to have you both on the show. Uh, where can people find you guys on social media? Uh, Unqua, give us your thoughts, and then Dara will go to you, and then we'll have to say goodbye to both of you for now. There you go. Nice and simple. You behave sometimes, right? Getting better. Okay. There you go. You <laughs> haven't tagged that out the last couple of times, so I wanted to make sure that I'm assuming you've been behaving more. <laughs> there, that's true it's true you're a Yankees fan how, how dangerous could you be <laughs> sounds about right <laughs> sounds about right Dare where can people find you on social media there you go phenomenal you guys are the best thanks so much for swinging by this morning we'll talk to you both soon alright Thanks, guys. Yeah, you as well, too. There goes Dara and Unqua on the uh, Morning Brew this morning. Great to hear from them and uh, some very, uh, very true statements, to say yeah, the least, about, about the sports world. And they both kind of like answered, the, uh, answered one of our questions of the day, too, the uh, domestic yeah, violence thing. Right. So uh, what, what did you take away from that conversation, Mackenzie, about everything that's about what they said about the draft as a whole or just in general about just their comments that they made? Yeah, so obviously, as you know, the domestic violence thing is something that I am constantly wondering why the NFL decides to put up with it um, right. or allow it to happen or continue to go on. It's frustrating. Um, yeah, I, I just don't understand it. I think I'm currently studying public relations and communications in college, so I I don't understand why you would willingly accept somebody like that into your organization mm-hmm. because they might be one of the better players, which means they're going to become the face of your organization. Right. And then that gets added to your reputation and the way people see your organization. And I, you're asking for a PR crisis. And you are. You really are. <laughs> when you draft somebody like that, you better have a plan in place um, for if they were to do something because chances are it's going to happen. Right. And that, that's the biggest thing for me, too. And that's why I made that argument when we were talking to Unqua and Dara as well, too, saying, like, listen, I don't feel like a couple extra wins is yeah. worth it to then deal with the PR headache. Right. It's really not. No. I mean, if I have Bob Jones that assaulted three women in college, but, you know, threw for, for 20,000 right. yards in his four years in college, like, yeah, he might make my team better, but I don't want that around. I don't want that yeah. cancer in my locker exactly. room. And I understand that, yeah, people can change. They can be mm-hmm. reformed. Well, well, show me that. And then come back in a couple right. of years, and then we'll, we'll see about maybe giving you a tryout yes. or something. I'm not going to spend a first-round draft pick on a guy yeah. that you know, beat a woman can sit, you know, all the time. Like, right. I, it just it blows my mind that people put so much stock and are so desperate. I'm like, there are NFL players that are free agents that are just hanging around right. that are desperate for a job that are, that are good. With that, great character, willing right. to work hard. Exactly. They want that spot. Yes, yeah. they, they might not be that elite level, but they're right. going to still give their all, and they also don't have all the baggage that comes with yes. them as well, too. So that, that really blows my mind, honestly, that people get so invested and are so desperate to get a, a win on their schedule just because, yeah. you know, it just, it just blows my mind, honestly. Josh comments on Facebook, too. He says, the NFL does whatever they can to look good and make money at the same time. I agree that people deserve a second chance uh, in most cases. That's true. In most cases, like... I try to be a very understanding person. I mean, mm-hmm. as one that is a Christian, I try to show, you know, you know, the Christian love to people as well, too, in the sense of like, okay, you know, you, you messed up, you know, you, you yeah. can be forgiven, you can move on. But there are, there are certain things. If you, you beat a woman, you kill somebody, certain things are just not forgivable. Right. Like, that's between you and God at the end of the day. But like, for me to you, like, if you go out and kill somebody, I'm probably not going to forgive you. Right. If you kill my wife or you kill my son, like, I'm probably never going to talk to you and I'm going to want you persecuted at the highest right. level. It's a little different if you... You know, whatever. I mean, you know, hypothetically, you, you accidentally like run your car into my wife's car. Like, no one dies. Like, yeah. it's an accident. Like, okay, totally understand. Mm-hmm. Wasn't your fault. Yeah. But, like, if you purposely go out and do something, we're gonna have a problem, and I'm gonna blackmail you forever. And, yep. and like, nope, done. 
Yep. But some people are all just, they love success. And it's like, we just got to do it. I don't care. Yeah. I don't care what's going on with you. Yeah. I never, I, I, I don't, I don't it know. It blows when, my mind. When did we get to that point in society that we needed to, that we care more about success yeah. than the morals? It's a sad day. It is. It's it really, really is, unfortunately. Day. But, well, hopefully we'll, we'll step aside from that from a little yeah. bit. But uh, obviously keep your thoughts and comments going. Uh, we did have some good traction in the beginning there about uh, asking people on a lighter note, if you're mad that McDonald's is getting rid of their high C <laughs> drink as well, too. There was some real backlash about it. Uh, very good morning to you, Brandon, and Tom, and others as well, too, chiming in. But uh, let us know your thoughts about that. Plus, we're asking the question to do uh, today as well. Should college players' domestic violence charges be resolved before entering professional mm-hmm. sports? I feel like you don't hear about that as much in baseball or hockey yeah. or basketball. I mean, basketball a little bit. But, yeah. like, baseball and hockey, I never hear about a lot of that mm-hmm. stuff. I don't know if that's just the sport or a, Yeah, is just, the culture a little bit different? It might be. Yeah. I mean, baseball, I feel like, is not as much of a, like, whoa, I'm big and strong. Like, yes. Yeah, like, it is to an extent. Like, oh, I can hit the ball far. But, like, you're not out hitting people to prove how strong you mm-hmm. are. You're just trying to hit a ball. And right. Try to run fast to a base and make a catch right. so i think the macho man mm-hmm. it's more of an indi- individual yep. thing i would agree with that so i think that might be a reason why uh some people get less mm-hmm. issued in that regard so and so. i also think with hockey you have to have a i mean your character has to be good that is a hard sport to play not that the other sports are not but you really got to be in the right mentality for that because you got to be willing to work hard right. and you're going to get beat up a little bit more than some of the other sports. Right. No, so. I, I completely agree. Speaking of hockey, do, have you been following the playoffs at all recently? Yeah, a little bit. A little Not bit. as big of a hockey fan that's as That's true. No, that is, that's definitely more of Jamie's department and even yeah. Tanner as well, too. But uh, some scores from you for yesterday. The Predators did beat the Blues 3-1. to one. The Preds now have a yep. 2-1 series lead. The Ducks scored six goals against the Edmonton Oilers uh, to beat them 6-3. The Oilers, though, uh, the Ducks um, are still trailing 2-1 to one in the series, so... Still a lot left to play in that yep. one. Uh, Cap- Capitals and Penguins, uh, they're going to be dropping the puck uh, for the first time here uh, t- tonight, uh, that game at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. Should be a good one, to say the least. So looking forward to that one for sure. But uh, Penguins won the first game 3-2 to two a couple of days ago. Senators beat the Rangers 2-1 to one as well a couple of days back on Thursday. So uh, some exciting playoff hockey, to say the least. But I want to I get out of this whole sports world thing. I know we could talk about sports for, forever, Mackenzie, <laughs> because you and I definitely love it. Yeah. But um, there's you're, you're entering that age. I'm a little bit older than you, not by much. Yeah, not but much. you're entering that age where the word adulting starts getting thrown around. <laughs> and it's like, oh, you're getting towards the end of college. Yeah. You know, and what are, the first, what, are the, what are the questions when you go to a family reunion or a family event? What are like the first things people ask you? Um, probably if you're in a relationship. Yep. Um, what are you doing for work? What's your major? <laughs> yep. And you probably tell them the same things every time you see them. Yes. Because they probably don't change that much. It's true. Like, but Grandma, I, I just saw you last week, Grandma. Yeah. Like, I'm still dating Kyle. Like, right. It's, it's <laughs> still fine. Like, we haven't broken up. Like, two years and now 24 weeks we've been right. dating. Now yeah. 23. <laughs> like, okay, great. Thanks. Well, yeah. well, the reason I asked that is because BuzzFeed News came out with a – a poll asking different questions about Mm -hmm. what you consider to be an adult or what you must do to be considered an adult. And there's not a lot of questions, but I want to, I want to ask you and they're they're yes or no questions. So the question is in your opinion, which of the following must you do or have to be to do or have to be considered an adult? Okay. Mm -hmm. So pretty straightforward. So pay your own bills. Yeah. Yes. It's very, very important Uh, have a full time job. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's pretty important. Uh, Live outside of your parents' home to be considered an adult. That, Ooh, see, we're, mov- we're, we're moving point. away from the, like, you move out of the house and then yeah. you're officially done. A lot of people now, you hear about the, the basement dwellers, but still have yeah. a full-time job. I mean, a lot of people are about saving money nowadays. Yeah. Or, as long as you're not, like, living off of your parents, but yeah. living at home, I think some people I mean, are okay with that. Because I, I would always think, like, if I took a job back home, mm-hmm. I wouldn't mind living it. I mean, obviously, I have a bedroom at my house, but right. my basement is completely finished, and it, you could basically have a tenant in it, so I wouldn't mind living down there and saving money for a couple right. of months or something. I don't know, but I, does that make me less of an adult then? That's the thing. I like, I, I took I a year like off between high school and college to, yeah. to work and live at home, and I mean, I worked two jobs. I, I had to borrow my mom's car to get to work, but like, I still, I lived at home with, yeah. my, with my mom and my brothers, but I still was working full time. Right. And I think that was I would have considered myself yeah, an adult at that point. Right. I helped with bills, I helped with food, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So, I guess I don't know. I I guess I would have to say maybe no that you don't have to live outside your parents' home to be considered an adult. I think if you're 
using the space but financing your own life right. is the it's difference. It's like as long as you're – if you're treating yeah. it like you're renting a room right. rather, like instead of just like, yeah, I'm here, like mom, do my laundry, mom, mm-hmm. make me lunch, like, well, then, yeah, that's yes. where it starts to become yes. a problem. Yes. Okay. Uh, next question, do your own laundry. I think that kind of helps. I think yeah. that, that – that, because I mean, it kind of comes with having your own place. And some people or, like doing their own laundry. Yeah. I enjoy doing my own laundry. My wife does a phenomenal job with it as well, too. But, like, there's something about yeah. the washer and dryer and the laundry room experience. I don't know what it is. And some people just don't like others touching their laundry. Like, right. I wouldn't want somebody else moving my laundry from the washer to the dryer. Right. I and don't you, do you get, like, really OCD about that at college? Like, I don't know if you ever, like, mm. like the, when you live in the dorms, like, I don't, yeah. know, I don't know how I it was at your school. I only lived there my freshman year. And yeah. Same here, yeah. too. Like, but, yeah. like, you would come down after, like, a couple hours and, like, your laundry would have been moved from the washer to the dryer. Yeah. Just, or like, just, like, chucked on a table. Right. Like, it's like, get your hands off my laundry. Right. Like, I get other, you needed it. Yeah. yeah. I get you needed it, but, like, yeah. come on. Get your own. Um, <laughs> this is a good one that we've kind of touched on a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't receive regular financial assistance from their parents or loved ones to classify them as being an adult. I think that, yeah, I, don't, I, I think that the moment that I stopped getting a little bit of assistance from either my parents or my grandparents yeah. after, I, after I graduated college, I think was very important because mm-hmm. my wife and I were sustainable. We were trying to just right. live our own life. And the fact that people still like, I know people that are like in their 40s and 50s that are still giving money from yes. their parents. I'm like... Grow up. Right. What are you doing? Right. That just that, that blows my mind. Yeah. How would, would you, you agree with that one? Yeah. I would say, I mean, I'm kind of in the middle with some of these because being in college, I feel like you're half adulting. You're it not is. really completely adulting. Because you still like to be able to go home. Yeah. Because, I mean, you go home for holidays and, like, you're like, yeah. oh, like, I'm and a I kid again. And I bring my laundry home. Yeah, like, I'm a kid again. Like, right. hi, mom. I love you. Make me dinner. Like, right. And I like you only have some bills. You don't have right. all of the bills. Right. My bills are different than your bills. Yeah. Like you're not paying an electric bill. You're not putting money in a four hundred one k. Or you're right. not doing life insurance. Yeah. Like, exactly. But Those you have, but you have a cell different. phone bill, though. I'm assuming, right? Or do you share a family plan? Yeah. I and I know a lot of people that, that do that. Yeah. Because see, that's what I was gonna say. Is I. I mean, I pay my own rent. I pay my electric. I pay my. Mm-hmm. Um, Wi-Fi bill. I, I pay all of those right. things. Right. Which are all very. But important. I don't pay. I didn't pay for my car and. I don't pay for my cell phone. But I think, and so I'm I think like that, half adulting. I think that first car, though, I feel like is very much a rite of passage, though. Like, mom yeah. and dad help usually, like, push you. Yeah. You know, like, if you're fortunate enough to come from a family situation where mom, can, mom and dad can help you get a strong foothold, and then you can kind of right. jump from there. Like, I don't have the same car I had when I first went mm-hmm. to college. Like, I've graduated from that. Right. I mean, you know, since my wife and I have been together, we've bought, bought a car together. Right. We've moved up together kind of a thing. But... Certain people, though, are like, oh, like, mom and dad, like, it's been three years, like, time for a new car, right. isn't it? It's like, what? Like, yeah. You work full time. Get your right. own car. Lease a car. Right. Like, do anything. And I, I mean, I make money, obviously. I right. work three jobs while being a full time student and playing a sport. But if I, thank you, thank you. If I, wow. <laughs> if I had, if there was ever a time that I didn't have rent money or didn't have money, mm-hmm. my parents would be more than willing to help me. Right. But I've distinguished that factor of, no, have you I had want the, have you had the conversation myself. though? That's the big thing. Because I mean, some they, people just don't have it. They try to still support me. I think. sure, and I like financially support me. I'm yeah. saying, and I say like, no, I'm fine. Mm-hmm. No, I got it. Like if, even, if I'm not, I will admit it. But I'm fine. Right, and that's even how I am now too. Like I've been married for mm-hmm. almost two years now, and like my mom or my grandparents, every once in a while, I'll be like, well, can we can we buy you this or like yeah. and like yes, you can buy me dinner occasionally. Right. Or sure, like you can you can buy me a new shirt. Like sure. Yeah. But like, oh, hey, here's $600 to help with rent this month. I'd be yeah. like, no, no, I don't need yeah. that. I worked Nor hard. Nor do I want it. Right, yeah. exactly. It's yeah. like I'm never going to feel – because like as soon as you succumb to that, then it's like, oh, now I got him. Like, right. okay, like all right, I know that he's still dependent on me. Mm-hmm. He can't pull away. And then they feel like they can make decisions about your life. Yes. And then it just gets no, super messy. No, get out. <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, th- there's there's two, a couple of funny ones on here that I'm curious to know if you classify mm-hmm. as uh, being an adult or not. Yeah. Um, have your own account on Amazon Prime, Netflix, Hulu, HBO Go, other streaming services. Does that classify you as being an adult if you have your own? I know a lot of people that share theirs. I, I'm an adult, I, but I share my Hulu account with a friend. I have my yeah. own Netflix account, but I know others borrow mine. But, okay, so here's my thing. So my boyfriend pays for Netflix and my mom pays for Netflix and you get – like what, three or five TVs on each of them? Well, dep- so, uh, yeah, there's a couple. Whatever. Yeah, there's right. like variations. So of why it, yeah. would I pay for it? I right. can log into one on my computer and log into the other one on my TV. Exactly. No, that, that's the big thing. I mean, we yeah. have we have family friends of ours that you know make more than enough money, but because we have a Netflix account, they're like, "Do you mind if we just?" Yeah. I'm like, sure. Right. It's like, fine. I'm not like, going to use it. It's only ten bucks a month. One TV. Right. right. 
But like, it's always funny too because those are the times that when you want to watch Netflix, yes. that they also happen to be on. Yes. And like, you get that little like, there's too many devices. You're like, oh come on, it's my Netflix yes. account. Or you watch a movie. And mm-hmm. then it shows up on their recently watched, and you eh, maybe you didn't want right. them to know that you watched exactly because the family that, that shares something. our account have kids, yeah. and they're like, "Oh, well, like I'll see like Ella Enchanted or like yeah. Pretty Little Liars," and I'm like, <laughs> "Wasn't me watching that?" I'm yeah. like, "I'm looking like oh, like Thirteen Reasons Why." Like, right. whoa, like okay, like there's some stuff going on here. Yeah. Um, the, the funny one about this is Floss Daily. So if that if that classifies you as being an adult, then I am not an adult because I do not. I was going to say the same. Thing. I do not floss daily. I'm sorry. I, I brush my teeth multiple times oh, a day. Yeah. I do the mouthwash thing. I just. Oh yeah. And that's like, isn't that like the biggest lie that people tell when you go to the dentist? Like, how often have you been flossing? Right, like once a day. Yeah, no like, one does that. Nobody flosses. Like maybe it's just the way the generations are nowadays, where people just don't have time. Yeah. But even still, like, but then that's the uh, it's the argument, like, you don't have thirty seconds to floss right. your teeth, but like, there's a, it's a process, like, it's very difficult to do. But do you actually do use it. the floss? I do. See, I don't. I have those little, the little like thinker things. Yeah. Yeah. With, yeah. I don't. Way know. easier than you just throw it away. It and is. You don't have to wrap your fingers. And that's then get true. It then you get fingers. like you know, like cut circulation off. Yeah. It gets, it gets weird. Like uh, even the even the picker things though too though like. I, don't, I guess maybe I just don't like the sensation of, like, the floss, like, in between okay. my teeth, like, by my gums. Yeah. Maybe that just is what gets me. So I have an electric toothbrush to kind of, like, counter that. But okay. that's always question number one when you sit in the dentist chair is how often do you floss? And you're right. just like. <sighs> and you're like, wait till you floss my gums and then they bleed all yeah, over the you'll place. Know. And then like, you'll know. I'm going to, like, give it 20 <laughs> seconds and you'll know yeah. how often I floss. It's like, it's, it's a little embarrassing yeah. but true at the same time. So those are some great ones. Uh, we can, we'll post the article here, too, in the in the comments section if you guys want to take a look at it. Um, Jeff on Facebook says that he apparently is not an adult either uh, based off of some of these stipulations. <laughs> um, so, uh, Join yeah. the club. Join the club, Jeff. It is okay to not be an adult. Um, a couple other things. You and I both, and this is maybe our millennials side showing, mm-hmm. but um, SpaceX apparently launched a, a Falcon 9 rocket today. Uh, apparently they're trying to reuse some of the old Falcon rockets we were both kind of curious. The little bit of research we've done about this, we couldn't really find much that really yeah. made a lot of sense to us. But but isn't the, that normal? I think like, so. We like, don't they, get they, that much information about things anymore. It's true. Yeah, you were bringing this up earlier about other things as well, yeah. too. I, I forget the example well, you were like, using. Well, like when we earlier. drop bombs on other countries, it's right. like, oh, yeah, by the way, two days ago we killed 10,000 people. What? Yeah. It's just like, I'm sorry. Like, what? I feel like in the past it was. And it's such a drop in the bucket, watch too. the rockets or. Right. You know, oh, we're going to. Obviously, if it's like a sneak attack or something, you're not going to tell them well, about yeah. the bottom. It's like, hey, but everybody. We're just not really educated or informed about things anymore. Do you think that's our generation or do you think that's society as a whole now? Because I guarantee you, like, yeah. there's certain people you probably could go up to on the street and be like, oh, yeah, like, I knew that happened this morning. Like, I was following it. Like, I was super excited yeah. about it. But, like, I guarantee you, you probably go up to most people our age yeah. and they're going to be like, what's, what's SpaceX? Yeah, I like, feel like it is a little bit of our generation because even if the information was there, we might not pay attention to it or seek right. out that knowledge. But I also feel like the amount of information that's given isn't as much. That's a good point. Like even like I said, you and I, I read the article out yeah. loud to you when we were talking about we were it, and we both confused, were like, like looked at each it? other like, so what did they do? Like right. they relaunched? Or what is the point of did it? Did something? Yeah. Like are we attacking people with this? I don't understand. Yes, I, I really don't. But. Um, if anybody out there that has an idea what the heck SpaceX is, please do. That would be phenomenal. Um, that would be very helpful for yeah. us. But uh, we do also wish uh, a good morning to Tika and Liz and Jeff as well, too, swinging by this morning. Uh, keep those comments coming. We are asking the two questions of the day. Uh, are you mad McDonald's got rid of High C, the High C orange drink? Uh, M- Mackenzie and I are a little, eh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> not, too, not too bad about it. But then we're also asking the questions that college players – uh, domestic violence charges be resolved before entering professional sports. That's a yeah. That's definitely a <laughs> yes. Um, Josh asked a good question. He says, use the question to help you kind of figure out. He said, would you let mm-hmm. them in your house to eat dinner with your family? Yeah, I If love your answer that. is no, then don't add them to your team. That's yeah, I loved that. Absolutely right. It's kind of the same saying as like, if you wouldn't want your grandma to see it, then you probably shouldn't post it. Right. <laughs> Right? It's along the same lines. It is. It dep- well, and then I like some people, though, that would come back with that. They'd be like, well, it depends on your grandma. Like, some people's grandmas are, like, super hip and, like, super, like, woo, like, whatever. But then you've got, yeah. like, the, like, it, it's – everybody's grandma's different. I know I know one of my grandmas who is, like, a hardcore, like, Catholic. She would – like, yeah. that would very much – like, if I'm living by her rules, then yes. I would right. – half the things that I see people post on social media, they would never do. But, like, my other grandma, a little bit more liberal, a little bit more free, a little bit more, you know, kind of funny, mm-hmm. crazy, like – She'd be a little bit more, a little bit more okay right. with some of that. So, yep. but it, that is a very valid point, though. Uh, Liz chiming in says, "Nope, don't go to McDonald's." So she doesn't care, not affected by it. But she says, "Yes, the charges definitely have to be cleared." Yep. So, definitely, definitely a good thing in that regards. But 
Uh, what else did we have today? I know that there was some other stuff going on. Um, you had asked a couple of good questions in the show notes, but I wanted to, wanted to kind of open the floor up to you if you had other things you wanted to, to dive around here since we're coming towards the tail end of our program today, Mackenzie. Yeah, so, <clears throat> excuse me. So, um, I thought it was kind of funny that people hate Roger Goodell so much <laughs> that they assumed that he was wiping a booger on it's just a bad person. that handicapped girl's back. I do have How the do video. You know? Like, maybe his, like, tip of his nose was just a little Right, itchy. you don't know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Maybe it just <laughs> it's pretty to normal be, to be like, oh, okay. Like, you whoops. Know? Like, yeah. I've got the. I'll, I'll show the video here. Um, if I can pull it up real quick here. So take a look at this little little nose wipe there. <laughs> Girls walking back. Little like hand on the back briefly. Like we'll show it one, we'll show it one more time here. A little bit like, oh yeah, thanks so much for it. And boop. But it, that was. I just don't understand. <laughs> like I I've wiped my nose before, but like I don't. Like if I'm like saying like hey thanks for coming like that yeah. wasn't like a that wasn't like a like hey like thanks right. for coming that was a quick little like snatch and grab kind of yeah, thing like that's so true. hypothetically you, if that if there was a booger on the hand and it was just like a I feel like you would have put his hand on her back a little bit longer to been like hey like right, thank sure you for doing off. this like but like right. the fact that it was just a quick little like whoosh, kind of thing like that does make me think that he was trying to go for the wipe like he was trying yeah. to be nice but he was trying to go for like a quick little wipe yeah but on the flip side of it it kind of makes me sad like I. I didn't even see what the girl spoke about or why she was there. Uh, either, and yeah. like, I kind of wish, don't that, care was about the, that, I wish that was in the news. Like, why does it matter that he touched her back? Right. I, that, that's the Sad thing, too. Day again. I don't it, get it. I it don't is. understand. I, like everybody else, I'm not a huge fan of Roger Goodell. I get it. But right. for that girl's sake, really, is that what she needs to be in the media for? She, and that's what she's going to be remembered by, right. too. She's, she probably was super excited yeah. that she got to do this. And then I guarantee you, she probably got home, or her parents got it, you know, found out scrolling yeah. news later. It's like Roger Goodell wiped booger. On, right, on... and this three second video, you only see her back, like you don't even actually right. know who she is. So, because that's the way the media world you, works girl. nowadays. I'm sorry. It is. It's really sad, unfortunately. Yeah, Liz says I agree. What did she say? I bet it was wonderful. Yeah, with the heart. yeah like that's. I'm the gonna one... need to look that up because I'm feeling a little guilty now that I right. watched this three second video over and over again and don't actually know exactly why she was. I agree. Jeff coming to the rescue for us, by the way, says SpaceX is a private yeah. company owned by Elon Musk. So there we go. Jeff to the rescue, apparently. Thank you, Jeff. I, I mean, you have, you're a cologne company and, or a cologne manufacturer, and you want to own a space rocket, I guess, too. It's just money. So yeah. I guess why not? I, I guess I don't know. Uh, Jeff also says any male who touches a female is under scrutiny. That is true, especially an older male to a younger female. Mm-hmm. There's always, always scrutiny true. with that, unfortunately. Yes. I mean, that's that's just the the nature of it like the mm-hmm. like the, even like the friendly like you know shoulder tap yeah. or like could be no anything right. at all but the, p- the fact that like if you're seeing you know hand on the back or like hand support like whatever like people get yeah. all bent out of shape unfortunately and that that's just how some people are like right. i'm a very friendly person yeah. like and i i try to show you know affection or try to show like moral support to yeah. people like in different ways and right some people have misinterpreted that before be like what are you doing and i'm like like they're like no right. like no nothing like yeah. i just just trying to like, hey, I'm very happy it used for to be you. Like a sign of respect, like, right? You know, like touch the back and like guide them right. through a doorway or something like that. Exactly. And I was like, don't touch me. Or that's even just how I feel yeah. like. Unfortunately, like that's so hard nowadays for guys to be gentlemen to women because they're yeah. so like on edge about that stuff. Like, yeah. you open the door for a woman nowadays and you'll get a nasty look. Like, what are you doing? Like, I can open my yeah. own damn door. Like, whoa. Yeah. And like, I'll admit to that. I always say thank you and right because like, I think it's awesome. Like. Thank you. But that's but, such a small population of that, for, I feel Right like. away in my head, I'm kind of like, like, what do you want? What are the intentions? Right. Yeah. And that's just, unfortunately. Also, living in Milwaukee, though, you kind of have to that, be that, that way. That is the thing, so, right. Yeah. Exactly. And depending on where you live in the country, like, that makes total yeah. sense. Like, if you're, like, in rural Kansas and, like, you, right. you got the gentlemen that are like, oh, open oh, the door. a nice like, hometown oh, like, guy. Like, thank you. Yeah. yeah. What a guy. <laughs> like, you, your mama raised you right. But, right. like, you do that in Milwaukee, it's like, boy, what you want? Like, yep. get out of here. Like, okay. Like, sorry. Didn't mean no, nothing bad about it, but... Sorry, fellas. Right. I'll try to be better. Exactly. <laughs> well, you have a boyfriend, so you don't need to be better. Just just tell I mean, your boyfriend to just Just make be. sure to say thank you more, I guess. There you go. That is yeah. very true. So, all right, Mackenzie. Well, we got to get out of here, unfortunately, but uh, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, I really appreciate great. you swinging Thanks by this morning. Uh, any any final parting thoughts for us about anything we talked about today or anything we didn't touch on that you wanted to just give two seconds to quickly? People got to get their high C before it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> what is the day that it's done? I don't know. I would have to. I have Me to look either. it up. Like we, we have to. We're gonna have to get an intern we're on gonna that. Have to mix it with your bourbon. Right, we're gonna brew have is, to have it on saying. a Sunday morning after a Saturday night out. Right, like I don't know. What are how are people going to recover from hangovers anymore now that the the high C from McDonald's is gonna yeah. be going out of stock? I guess they're gonna have to switch over to Coke. Join my club. That's true. And I, I guess I don't know. Like our other like is high C going away or is it like the man? They probably sort of have many people buying it. I think maybe. Maybe I don't know. I think they're just switching out the spot in the dispenser. I'm assuming so. Maybe it's yeah. just maybe it's just a McDonald's thing. Like yeah. maybe you could go to a Hardee's or an Arby's or yeah. anywhere else. Or you can and, just buy the little juice boxes at the right. store. It's still the same thing. But yeah. For some reason, like out of the, out yeah, of the, it's just it's something different. better about right, it. Right, like Coke at McDonald's versus Coke in a bottle. It's it's way different. better. Yeah. Way better. It's different. Totally agree. All right. Well, thank you to you, Mackenzie, for swinging thank by. You. Thank you to all of you for swinging by this morning as well too. Uh, special thanks to Dara Bittler and Unqua Sonia as well too. Two of our NFL correspondents for helping us kind of break down everything that took place uh, in the overall uh, NFL draft over the weekend. So a big thanks to them for doing that. Uh, thanks to all of you uh, for continuing to support what Brew Sports has got going on as well too. We know that you guys are busy folks out there, but taking us with you uh, wherever you go always means a lot to us. So we appreciate that. Uh, make sure to come back at 11 a.m. Central Time for Halftime with myself and Tanner Burke. And remember, you can find uh, our Off the Rails segment today as well, too. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that we've got planned for today, so make sure you come back for that. And then tonight, of course, at 5 p.m. Central Time, it's Inside the Park with Barry Nelson and Ryan Thies. And you're actually going to get uh, Dara tonight again. So she's going to be back on that program with them talking about some of the great things taking place in the baseball world. So nice. some good stuff, good uh, to guys. say the least. Yes, yes, absolutely. So uh, for Mackenzie Laurent, I am Baxter Colburn. Thanks so much for swinging by the Morning Brew. Uh, we'll see you guys next time on Brew Sports. Enjoy the rest of your Monday, everybody.